order, the Tuesday, February 14th, regular meeting of the City Council stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> all right. Uh, are we uh, is that Go ahead and wake up. Motion and a second for the agenda. Motion to give an amendment. I'll second. Glad it. Okay. We need any any uh, discussion on that? I have an addition. addition. Uh, so I'd like to re add resolution 7, 2023. It's accepting a donation for our police and fire from a resident. So that's a consent. And did everybody... Uh, Everybody read that? Everybody okay with it? Mm -hmm. I emailed it out. Yep. Didn't see a donation. Was, yeah. I didn't see it late late today. Well, it yeah, it was later, later today. It, it was a $500 donation from yeah. a resident. Yeah, the police cool. and fire, yeah. Okay, so that, I'll call that F1. Any other changes to the agenda? Okay, I got a motion, a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Motion carries five to zero. Consent. <coughs> I need a motion and a second. I'll make I'll, a motion. I'll second. Okay, any discussion on consent? I have one question on uh, item B. This is on page 11. We've got a, a charge. Um, from City of Maple Grove, WAC fees for third and fourth quarter, and, and I assume it's a typo. It says 2023, third and fourth quarter, but uh, yes. regardless, my question is: It seems like a an awfully big amount, given that that our housing um, starts slowed down in the month. Do those lag way behind, or um, how yeah, do so we get to that kind of a number? Some of those, or most of those, are from third quarter, which would have been July, August, September. And we still had pretty good growth or pretty good numbers in that area, Sundance Green, Sundance Woods development area and Braeburn Trails through um, probably September of 2022. Um, but it is a typo. It should be 2022, not 2023 for third and fourth quarter. Um, but we did have some of the larger commercial one come in in December, November of 2022. Um, I believe that one was inland. Um, and so one of the larger developments down there that commercial developments are much more mm -hmm. dollar amount than a neighborhood would be or a, a normal house. So they're on Maple Grove Water there? They are, yep. In that spot. So it's farther north than that we get to Rogers Water? Yeah, Rogers would be on the other side of the second Graco building. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> so the I guess they'll take that back. The Graco building, both Graco buildings are on Rogers oh, Water. Rogers. Yeah, but everything south of that is on Maple Grove. Okay. And... Is that essentially a, just a pass through for us? Yes, correct. Yep. So everything we get from them, we just pass it on to Maple Grove. So we charge them both fees when they're in that area. They char they get both Dayton um, trunk fees and Maple Grove trunk fees when they build a home or do a business in that area. So we charge them both fees for that area. Okay. So we do get something, mm -hmm. so we don't lose everything, and not everything goes to Maple Grove, but they just pay two fees there. Okay. If that makes sense. Thank you. Yep. Um, that was all I had. Does anybody else have anything? Um, <clears throat> okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. And consent is passed five to zero. On to open forum. Is anybody here for open forum? Is anybody online for open forum? Uh, so if anyone is online for the open forum, if you use the raise your hand function. I'm not seeing any. All right. We'll close open forum. Updates, exactly. Yeah. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. We have, have a few updates to tonight. Um, we have some meetings coming up next week with Hennepin County, one related to County Road 81 and one related to our transportation plan amendment. So we should be able to get some feedback and direction from Hennepin County on our transportation plan amendment. Is it um, with the 
customer share is with that with that's with the group like of staff. yeah like the okay. transportation staff of Hennepin County for both of those um, County Road 81 is the one um, follow up with the commissioner meeting that we had to try to figure out what we can do with County Road 81 long term we're coupled with Maple Grove coupled with Rogers the territorial, territorial all the way down to yes Dayton Parkway okay yep so um, Commissioner Anderson reached out to us I don't even know six months ago yep I bet I'm um, trying to figure out and get a coordinated group a focus group of County Road 81 and how we can make that better for everybody um, because it goes down to one lane in Maple Grove and then doesn't get back to two lanes till Rogers so I'm um, trying to coordinate how we can help that road with the traffic flows um, so hopefully you'll hear more from that that's on Wednesday and then Thursday we have the transportation plan amendment do a preliminary discussion with the county trying to get that process moving forward so We'll have some more follow-up with you for you guys at the February 28th council meeting. On the process for retrieving the 360 feedback, um, I did send an email out, I don't even know, a couple weeks ago now, about that um, cost. It was $22,000. Um, with that being unbudgeted this year, that's going to be really hard to swing trying to do a $22,000 unbudgeted um, valuable feedback, and it's obviously going to be valuable feedback, but think the approach that staff would like to see is maybe doing a 360 feedback just via survey monkey or something that we can do internally for this year and then plan on budgeting for it next year to be able to utilize that process as a steps process into the into the um, having a 360 feedback be part of our annual review process um, as much as we like to do it this year which we can move forward with it if that's the direction of council wants to take but at this point twenty two thousand dollars can be used for a lot of other things um, at this moment that we and for an unbudgeted item that we're not planning on spending or weren't planning on spending during the 2023 budget season. So if there's any other comments or questions about that, I would answer them now or follow up via email. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, the questions that you are going to put on to for this year, the Survey Monkey, have you figured out how you're going to come up with those yet? I have not. Okay. Nope. Those are up for debate, or sure. I'll probably reach out to a few different you know, maybe cities or something that do have done 360 feedback to get some of those questions. Yeah. Um, obviously, okay. don't want it to be biased towards any which way, but it's just yep. to get feedback and information so we can utilize it and um, better assess our um, management managing services and myself as well. So I, I had the same thought and. and Thinking that if our intent is to to likely use Gallup next year, I'm sure their questions are probably copyrighted. But if you could model them yes. somewhat after what they're asking, then I can ask them. At least then we've got you know somewhat comparable data when sure. we do. We just and did we ours, so I could probably <laughs> give you ours too. But sure, yeah. And again, again it doesn't have to be super like we have to have the exact questions in order, but it's just get the feedback to start the process because. Having this part of our annual review would not hurt anything. Being able to try to help us manage people better is always a, mm -hmm. a plus for everybody. Yeah. So, But looking forward to do that in probably 2024 would be a good process for us to do if this one goes well. And I will follow up with those after that. Um, a reminder that the fire department meeting is this Thursday, uh, starting at 6. There will be pizza provided if you'd like to join. Um, a little early for pizza. Um, an additional reminder that next Monday, the President's Day, the offices will be closed. So if you have anything on Monday, please don't come to City Hall because nobody will be here. And the last one is another reminder for staff and update for council that Dayton Elementary will be lighting some small fires behind City Hall Fire Station this Friday. Um, they're part of their survival field trip that they have planned for their kids. So I don't know if it'll be exactly behind the City Hall Fire Station here or it'll be in the woods between Dayton Elementary and City Hall. But you get any calls it's not a real fire it's just <laughs> like lighting a just a bunch of kids bring a bunch of kids, kids. Woods, start fires you know what can go wrong part of survival <laughs> apparently teach them about matches huh? that's right <laughs> so that's all i have thank you so much Amy? um so i have a meeting with wright county this thursday it's a discussion about elections um and so i have gotten some feedback i know we had some concerns with the wright county portion of our elections um, and there will be some changes that will be notable for 2024 um, for extended services so that just the mail option um, would expand so that they could be in person as well 
at Wright County. Okay. Um, but we can go over, uh, I'm gonna get some final numbers and what that looks like for cost-wise if we were to bring it back in-house. Um, and then we'll be looking at an app for the city that will be on Wednesday the 22nd at 10, if any of you are interested in joining. Um, otherwise, I think all the staff will take a look at it, and if we're all comfortable and think it's a great idea, we'll bring it forward to council as well. Uh, and then the communicator is coming due. Um, I did get a recommendation to add uh, some information about our YouTube channel now that we're utilizing that, so that will be added. and. If you can think of anything else that you would like to see, either in this one or future ones, please email me. Um, and then now all of our commissions have city emails. So all of that information has been updated as well. Good job. That's all I got. All right. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I only have one update since it's fairly quiet in public works at the moment. We're just doing a lot of uh, maintenance on vehicles and fixing uh, picnic tables and those kind of projects this time of year. Um, the one thing that I wanted to comment on was uh, you're probably going to hear something about the uh, school parking lot next door. Um, it's in pretty bad shape. Um, what happened, uh, the, the school district uh, came and put some salt down out there. Um, so on gravel at this time of year is just a terrible idea. It turns everything to mush, and so it's just a muddy mess over there. Um, we can't plow it. We can't um, we can't level it out or anything. So it's going to be a bit of a mess until we can get in there and get it dried out. So um, that's unfortunate, but that's the way it's going to be for a little while. Evening, Mayor and Council. The only update I have is that officers went through defensive tactics training last week, um, so they're all caught up with that for the year. Um, we'll continue. We, I think we have three more um, defensive tactics. We're going to be renting Hennepin Tech um, for some simulator training, so when we do, I'll put out a notice to any of the council members that might want to attend um, the training. Chase? I don't have any. I don't have any either. Um, Scott? I got nothing. Travis? Nope. The only thing I have is um, I've got a couple of complaints about West French Lake. I haven't been in order to see what kind of shape it is, but it sounds like it's a mess. It's a mess. <clears throat> a real mess. Um, so uh, there's one area um, right as you get into it. Um, where again I think there's been some salt or something put down the driveway and that's bled over into the road there yeah, so right. as you go from the blacktop into the the gravel there um, it's broken up pretty bad so we've been over there and took over a, a couple of loads of gravel that we had in the shed and tried to fill that up and, and level it out um, there are other areas that are popping out um, so we're going to be using whatever gravel we can and just backblading it down there um, it's going to be just difficult to keep that up and running, but we'll do the best that we can with what we got. Um, the end at 124th is still being maintained by uh, the contractors who are using that end of the road. Um, I think um, the spring when, when the thaw's done, we will have to go in there and do a little bit of shaping up for that at that end. But um, it is, it's not in super bad shape. It's holding water in a couple of places, but um, we will... Yeah, go over there and put some more gravel in those spots. This rain probably isn't. And that's not helping us at all. All right, uh, that's all I had. Got yeah, um, well, just occurred to me when you're talking, Chief. Um, has there been any progress on the uh, shared social worker position? I know you had somebody that backed out, but. Um, Hennepin that. County had it open for applications. Um, we had a meeting two weeks ago, um, and they were supposed to close last week, and I have not heard anything else since. I know another city's um, social worker also backed out, um, so they were trying to get two um, now, so, but I haven't heard any updates on it. Okay, thank you. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up, I spoke to a resident at some length uh, regarding uh, speeding and safety on Deerwood Lane, which is just... The, road, the main road coming out of Hayden Hills, uh, that neighborhood, and uh, and I think speeding on uh, on residential areas. I think that's a topic that maybe we should have on our retreat, 
um, and I haven't seen anything from the gentleman who's going to lead that, but okay. I'll be sure to put that on my list. But I think we, we hear enough about it that I think we need to talk in some more depth about that. But one of the things he brought up that I think is is worth uh, considering is that, you know, in new neighborhoods, we've got a, a lighting standard for um, street lights and spacing on them and so forth. And then we've got this more than quarter mile stretch down Deerwood with no sidewalk and no, no lights of any kind. And I guess I would ask to see if we couldn't get a price on, on putting some street lights on that stretch of road. And I don't know if that would be you, Marty. I can certainly um, email you with the with the piece of road if if you're not familiar with it. Yeah, I do think I know what you, what you mean. It's just that going out to 129th there, yeah? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, we'll be Jason on that and get some pricing. Yeah, I think it would be worth looking at that. And I think it would be, you know, that I know that's an established neighborhood, but it's really become an extension of, of Hayden Hills. And I think that it, you could make an argument that, you know, we should have a similar standard for lighting down that stretch of road. That, that road, Jason, I think I had asked you about six months ago that exact question. But I don't remember if you ballparked something or you actually did some digging. Um, I had sent a unit price. I, I, I don't remember the numbers. Yeah, I don't numbers, either. But it was... <coughs> Yeah, there was so much per fixture, and if we went at <coughs> certain spacing, yeah, we can definitely put something together. And yeah, I'd like... With connect, I believe that's a Connexus area. We can get a cost from them on where it would be. Sure, I, I'd appreciate that. And, you know, it wouldn't be that many. I mean, you know, we don't want to duplicate what we did on Pineview. Um, but... Really? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, That's I, well I, lit. <laughs> it is. Yes. You can see yeah, everything. <laughs> uh, very, very safe stretch of road. Um, I don't know. You know, just to my eyes, it looks like four or five lights is what we're talking about for that for that whole stretch of road. But I won't make that judgment at this point. I just like to see what it would cost us to do. Um, other than that, I am um, haven't heard anything officially as far as um, whether we had any. Any options on the uh, uh, Connexus substation in terms of a land swap? I know there was a couple things that were being pursued, but I don't know if any of that has played out. Sure. Um, so there's been lots of discussion back and forth, trying to figure out what we can do, what the city can do, landowners, so on and so forth. Um, we got in contact with another landowner. Uh, would have been yesterday, um, and he's more than willing to help us. Um, adjust the location of it so that's a good positive thing and then I got an email today just before the meeting I was gonna reply to the residents let them know that um, Connexus is not able to move that station at all due to parts and pieces and everything that they've already ordered for that based on the engineering done at that location so they did their engineering last winter or last fall order all their parts and everything based on heights and where they need to go and all their bits and pieces of equipment and everything and so that was kind of a uh, shot in the it's locked in pants because, yeah, <coughs> so unfortunately we can't do anything about it. Um, I wish Connects would have told us that back in January when I talked to them and they said, oh, yeah, we're willing to help and move. And that's great. Um, but then never failed to mention that they couldn't actually physically move it. And so uh, I've spent lots of time, many emails, many phone calls, talking with residents and talking with them. But I just found this out at like 4.30 today. So what was the timely other, update. But What was the other property? Um, the same owner oh, the same lease, chunk? yep. Okay. So they were willing to help us out and, and move it and adjust it if needed. But but they still need access, so how would that have worked? Uh, a long easement or something? Yeah, we would have had a long oh, easement along okay. that. Um, basically, they would have given us a trail easement or usage for that along the power lines. I was gonna say so they would have, um, long term, it could have turned into a trail along that thing, which we're still working through. So that's, sure. that's a possibility that could work lo long term, but... For now, that's and um, regarding that, 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 that so now, um, what's the other company? Uh, There's another one that wants us. Excel, Excel. Excel. Yeah. Yep. Are they? They're, they have the same requirements. Yep. Is there any way we could like stack them so that that one's hidden? Or yep. There's okay. all. We'll, You're looking. We'll, we will. Yeah, works. we will work on all of those <laughs> things oh. as, as they come along. But like I said, it rains, it pours. It's great. So. Yep. Okay. Um, there'll be a, obviously a, a process that goes through that. That one isn't looking to come in for another year, so there'll be a public public hearings and discussions. So hopefully, if people are um, in that area are paying attention, they'll be um, contacting us, and obviously we'll 
be contacting them when things start moving on their end, but uh, from, from Excel. Connect system back out of putting in more mature trees there so nope. they'd fill nope. up quicker. So and they did full They did come center. up with a couple of things. So they said, uh, you know, obviously we apologize that we can't do anything moving it because we already have the equipment, but they're going to put in more mature trees than they normally would. So those will be taller right away than they normally would put them in. And then they also talked today, I talked to them and I said, can we get anything else? And they said, yeah, we could put trees on the south side of 117th. Um, oh. to try to shield the homes a little more on that side, basically on the other side of the sidewalk. Jason and Marty and I met with them and said, I think that would work for us. Um, that would be it better. It might be better for, if yeah. they would do both, I think. Angle-wise, that would be better. But yeah. angle-wise, it might be better to be able to. So the Connexus is trying to help us out with whatever they can and are not trying to be you know, pushy and saying we have to do this, but they are understanding that it's um, not the greatest thing to look at, but it's needed because we unfortunately need more power. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, about a month ago, I spoke to somebody from Connexus, and I'll pass his name on to you. Yep. But uh, it sounded to me like they were uh, willing to go even further than yep. that, including up to and including um, potentially doing some landscaping in people's backyards, the ones that are. Yep. Most so we had so further conversations with the developer, and that will maybe be something that they would be willing to do because they want to help out as well. So we just had that conversation this afternoon as well. Um, and said, you know, are you willing to help out at all? And they said, possibly. So okay. something that they can look into and try to see if they can help us out. And they said they'd be willing to help us out with those things, the developer, not the builder, So, um, which is great. And it's nice that everyone's trying to help as much as we can because, again, it's not great. F it's not going to impede everybody else on the other side of the road. It's only going to impede the people that are back basically back-facing to 117th in the northeast direction towards that substation. So... Um, it's a narrow focus number of key people, but they are going to be impacted with their views, um, at least in the meantime, until they get mature trees and are used to the substation being there. So, but unfortunately, we are stuck and it is going there. So, all right, thank you. Yep, I will. I will let the residents. I didn't have time this afternoon, but I will let the residents know as well. I've, I've been in contact with the one that's been kind of the spokesperson for um, the Rayburn Trail development. I've, I will let them know as well that I learned this afternoon, but I just didn't have time today. For the okay. meeting, so. Anything else, Dave? No, I'm good. Ah. Uh, so first, I want to say thanks to Chris for getting the videos up on YouTube. I've already utilized the download feature to uh, listen to on the plane, so thank you very much for that. Um, and I actually had a question for Scott. So when we had met about um, designating who was going to kind of go to which meetings, I think you had said the EDA wanted to get down to one council member. Well, they talked about it, but I mean, it hasn't gone anywhere since then. Okay. So they haven't pushed that at all? No. Okay. Um, and then right after I was out for vacation, I spent uh, seven and a half hours with the wonderful city staff. So I want to say thank you to Marty, Gary, Paul, and Teresa for spending time with me, catching me up. I did have a couple things I wanted to share from each of them that I think would be beneficial for everyone. So um, when I met with the fire chief, we kind of looked at some of the information from 2022 and some of the data there. Um, and we looked at the calls, about 50% of them are medical and 50% were all other, which includes fires, extractions, and things like that. I think it's helpful for us to know that when we're looking at the needs of the city. Um, he also commented that um, looking back the six months prior to him coming here, 2.35%, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you realize what it is, it, of calls were completely missed by our fire staff before I was here. Um, 15 calls, only one person responded, another 18, only two responded. Since he's been here, every single fire call that we've gotten or call to the city has been responded to. So he is making an impact on the citizens of Dayton, which I think is fantastic. Um, we also look, because I was trying to understand what kind of, what percent of fire calls come in the middle of the day. I know a lot of our firefighters have day jobs. Um, they don't just sit at home all day long. Um, and 63% of the calls come in between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. So when we look at trying to make sure that they can respond to the call percentage they need to, trying to make sure that percentage is fitting to that, I think is also important. I was very happy to see the recent vacation that he added to the firefighters as well to help them mitigate their work-life balance to be able to uh, keep their percentages up. And the last thing I think that came to light were radios. So in talking to him, um, we were talking about radios and uh, come to find out that if there is a fire call, we don't have enough radios for all of our firefighters meaning that if they're in a building, there's not enough radios for all of them. Um, and this actually has become an issue. I'm going to ask Zach to fill me or correct me where I go wrong, but we had a call 
um, recently where there was a fire and other fire departments were called in. Our firefighters were in the building. There was a call to get out of the building, but because all of them didn't have radios, they didn't all know it. The only reason they all got out is because other fire departments that had the radios they needed were tapping on their shoulders and telling them to get out. So they dropped a lot of equipment. They had to leave behind in a hurry to get themselves out Correct. because their lives are more important than the equipment. I don't disagree with that. Um, but mm -hmm. our lack of radios is a severe issue for our firefighters and for our citizens. So one thing I've been working with Zach and Gary on is trying to figure out if there's funding that we can get for that. Uh, the chief is looking into, and I'm probably seeing some of his thunder, I know he's not here tonight, he's looking into a grant to see if we can get money to cover the radios needed to make sure that our firefighters are safe. I think grant or no grant, we need to find a way to make this happen. Um, I think when he priced out the radios, it was 12000 if I remember his email correctly. Yeah, so it's not it's nothing, but it's not, we're not talking $200,000 no. piece of equipment. Oh, so no, I think it's something that... Yeah, so we need to find a way to make it work, in my opinion. I think most of the council would be agreeing to that if we can't get a grant for it, that we should either way make it happen because I think the lives of our firefighters should be the utmost priority when it comes to the fire service. Yeah, we currently lease radios, so the grant would be to buy them so we don't have to lease them. So basically it's like a 0% interest loan they give us to lease them for I think it's seven years or eight years until they quote-unquote go out of um, service or I don't even know what you want to call it, out of warranty. Why would we want to buy instead of lease? Um, the grant would allow us to buy them. So if we if we got the grant, we could buy them all and then cancel our lease and then might mm -hmm. not pay that annual cost per year to so have. So you can get a grant to buy them, but Correct. not to lease them. You got it, it. exactly. Right. Yep. So the grant can't <coughs> lease them. So if we wanted to get 10 radios this year, it would be a $12,000 increase to the budget annually because we would lease them um, for those 10 radios. So right. why would we send somebody into a house without a radio? We don't have enough on the trucks. At least that's what I've been told. I don't have like any. And, and so do for we get uh, enough firefighters for each call. Yeah. So say there's four firefighters that go on on the truck, right? Yeah. Or if so I'm sure. just going to round number. There's four fires in the truck. There's two radios in that truck. So one person oh. on the outside is running the truck, pumper or whatever, yeah. plus supply and water, doing everything, has a radio on the outside to communicate. And there's one person on the inside that the other radio is with one person on the inside of the fire. So, so we radio. only have two radios is what you're saying. Per, per truck. Per per truck. truck. You got and it. we can get up to five firefighters in some of the trucks. So when I asked Gary to price out, I said, I want to know how much it's going to cost to make sure all the, if we have a full truck of five firefighters, everyone's got a radio. Right. Yep. It only seems like the right thing to do. That makes sense. Uh, there is yeah. a, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Gary sent out an email about buying 20, uh, if, uh, you would know. 25 oxygen tanks? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. separate, yep. That's separate, though. That's the medical oxygen tanks, not like our SEBAs. So the, the that's county... That's not the oxygen yep. tank that, uh, that not we've on been back. filling through well, north. oxygen for the oh, yep. Yeah, so yep. it's been filled through north, but north is... It's it's hit or miss as far as like who's bringing it in and who's exchanging it and availability from north to have full tanks. Mm -hmm. So the broken tanks. We oxygen. entered in a, into a lease with air gas. And I think PD's going to piggyback on that as well, aren't you? Yeah, not all 25 is fire. No. Um, right, right. No, yeah, not, not all of them are going to be fire. It's yep. going to be a bank between emergency services and Dayton. Yep. So. And these are air but tanks, not oxygen? These are oxygen, oxygen tanks, tanks yes. to put on um, medical patients. Yep. Yeah. So oh, north is no, north is no longer providing yeah. us. We used yeah. to be able to bring them to north yeah. in Maple Grove yep. um, yep. to exchange, and then they would fill them. Um, and then we'd get them back. North is no longer offering that service, so we have to go out and find our own service. Right. So that's what that was. And okay. I would say kudos so to it. Gary and Kevin for calling air gas and negotiating a good price with them. Yeah, it's extremely so cheap. Yes, so on the air oxygen tank thing, it's North is not offering that free service that they have been in the past. Correct. Correct. Okay. All I'm, all I'm getting at is at some point you got to figure out, okay, I want this or I want this. You got it. Exactly. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I don't I mean, think this is a matter of wants. Yeah, I think yeah. when it comes to oxygen and radios, they're both needs. Well, yeah. if well, one's, yeah, if one's that, free that, and you go to release, that does it, make sense. It's, it seems to me that's a need. That's yes. a need. Why yeah. are we just now getting this? Well, I, I would ask the question. I mean, the chief's been here for six months. How many people have gone down to his office and talked to him? Well, he has well, opportunities here. I don't disagree, yeah. but it's a two-way street. You know what I mean? Like, all of us have an opportunity yeah. to meet with him, too, and ask the questions. I, I guess if I was a firefighter, I'd be concerned going into a building without a radio. Yeah. Agreed. Traps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it is a concern. But you guys have been doing it for how long? This isn't something new. This has been going on for a but, while. It's not but like again, yep. again, again, to me, this would be a need, so. yep. and 
we've gotten away disagree. without it. So that's that's <laughs> concerning to me. Yep. <laughs> I don't, and it, it, there has been instances where we are very we've been very lucky luck. that it hasn't become an issue. Yeah. All I and I don't want to rely on luck. All I would say to that is is that's where Gary has to say this is what we need because we gave up fifty some thousand dollars worth of concrete to spend elsewhere. Yep. Well. Not all of it, but yeah. Right. Right. I mean, that's <coughs> and an oxygen tank to me. I don't know where that fifty some thousand went, but an oxygen well, hasn't been spent. The radio would be <coughs> a good deal to have. Yeah. I don't disagree. The oxygen tank is a requirement. We don't have a choice. Yeah. Right. Radios are sure. still a need. Don't right. get me wrong, but right. um, we've been operating without them. I'm not saying we should continue to, but all right, yeah. continue, man. I met with. Um, Public Works team drove me around. I got to see how all the pump houses work. The treatment is very impressive. I'm excited to see that Pump 5 won't be a giant house. It's a small little thing, so that was kind of cool to see and understand. I don't know if everyone knows that, so I thought nothing else for the citizens. It's good to know that not every pump house is giant, that some of those pumps are fairly small and compact, which is good. Um, I met with Gear, uh, Paul in the police department, and he mentioned that there were 11,928 incidents last year that they responded to. So a lot of lot of instances they're responding to. Some of those are outside the city, correct, because we help with neighboring cities. But in general, we get help from neighboring cities also. Um, we talked a little bit about recent events, both in Minnesota and in Memphis. Um, we talked about things that um, we can do to help make sure that that doesn't happen in our city. Um, part of it's the mental health piece, which I know that you already brought up. Um, so thank you for that. The other piece is de-escalation and what we can do to help with that. And I know, Paul, when we talked, you had said that all the officers take a de-escalation class. Is that correct? Uh, officers are required every three years to take 16 hours of, eight hours of de-escalation, four hours of autism, and then four hours of other de-escalation type. Um, the thing we talked about is getting all our officers certified in um, crisis intervention. Um, so it's a thousand I researched it it's a thousand dollars per officer so it's something um, that I'll be looking at budgeting phasing in this year and then budgeting fully for the rest of them next year okay. perfect sure. so I think that was good to hear and if if we can swing the budget this year, I think the sooner we can get all the officers trained the better it is for the community to have that done um, and then last but not least, I met with Teresa. So a couple things I didn't know about Teresa, which I know she's okay with me sharing, is that she actually served in the armed services. And she's a licensed middle school science teacher, which is very fitting to the part of our mission where it talks about creating connections to our natural resources. So I think that it's a good fit and connection there. Um, so I just, again, want to say thank you to everyone for taking the time to meet with me. It was very beneficial to me um, and hopefully will allow me to help, help represent what is the needs of the city as well. Um, and then... I think that's all I have for today. All right, uh, we are on to uh, council business. The item G development moratorium public hearing. So it is a public hearing. Yep. Uh, so you have to open the public hearing. You get to bang your gap. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll open the public meeting for the development moratorium. And who's gonna? This out. Uh, I could. We'll, uh, I think we'll probably hand this one up to Kevin of Landform to discuss and then hold the public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Um, so the development moratorium was something that uh, you initiated and asked us to bring forward. Uh, there was a public hearing notice that was published in the paper. There was unfortunately an error in the public hearing notice uh, stating that it would be held at Planning Commission, but the date, time, and place were correct um, for the City Council meeting tonight. Uh, so with that, um, the staff did consult with the city attorney. You should hold a public hearing tonight, and then the moratorium can be republished in the paper for a later meeting date. Um, additionally, in your packet, you'll note that the timeline included bringing the development moratorium to the March 2nd Planning Commission meeting is, that, is what was done in the past, and because of the impact a development moratorium has on land use policy applications, things like that, that are all the... Um, reviewed by Planning Commission and given a recommendation to you before uh, you act on it. Uh, staff felt that was the appropriate path to take and then it would come back at the March 14th meeting um, for City Council to consider. Um, as part of that, staff is looking for some direction on what, would, what you would like to see within the moratorium in terms of what areas of the city, what types of land uses, because all those affect the public hearing notice that goes out. Because uh, if we have any active applications that the 
moratorium would um, fall under or impact, we have to notify those application holders or the developers of those uh, before we can bring it back to you as city council, um, as well as we want to make sure that we're covering the appropriate areas of the city with the public hearing notice, so whether it's the entire city or a certain geographic area, to be able to describe that in the public hearing notice. So what, what our request tonight is to hold the public hearing, close the public hearing, because there will be no action taken. I'm mm -hmm. glad to take any comments that um, residents or the public has to stay with them, just so we can have those moving forward. We can close it. We can have a bright, brief discussion. Mm -hmm. Sure. No, close the public. Close the public. Close. We so open it we open tonight, it. and then after everyone says something, and then we close it. We yeah. close not it for a, not a closed yeah. public hearing. Sorry, no. uh, cl no, close good. the public <laughs> hearing. Then we close the public hearing, and we can have discussion within council here of what we want to do moving forward. But then no action is being taken tonight mm -hmm. on a moratorium or anything else. We'll have further action at the March 14th meeting if that is the direction of the city council. So, um, yeah, just open for public hearing. We can have yeah, we can have comments now. Does anybody want to speak to this? Um, like he explained, it will be. Heard. Um, will the planning commission have a? Yeah, I don't think they'll have a. Uh, planning commission does not have a public hearing. Right, on this it will item. just be us, but they will discuss. Correct, it. but there'll be another public hearing at the March 14th. Correct. Meeting. Yeah. Yep. So would, are we closing the? I mean, would we close the public hearing, or we just continue? So, yeah. So it open because it was yet. published in the paper, we're oh, we after. legally are supposed to hold a public hearing. So we open the public hearing, take public testimony, and then close it. So we've met that responsibility. Yep. And then, be, without any action being taken tonight, and then it comes back on March 14th, and we do the same process. But the notice might be or will be different because it'll indicate city council, and then whatever direction from tonight as part of that notice to residents and. Um, people that are interested in developing it, the community. Yeah, it is not the same public hearing. That is what we're trying to say. Is that it, it, it will it no, will not no, be a continuation no. of this public hearing because the next notice will be different because it'll at least at a minimum say city council. Mm -hmm. So the new notice will can't be we can't hold a public hearing. So we'd have to close this public hearing at a later meeting and then reopen it, another one. So for can, for purposes of just making it much easier to follow, we'll have the public hearing tonight. We'll close this public hearing, and then if the direction of the council is to continue that moratorium process, then we will have another public hearing on the March 14th meeting where direction will actually be taken and action will, will happen because of the actual correct posting of the moratorium, whether that's a different change in geographics, whether that's a different change in what we want to close and not close, whether if we want to do the whole city, so on and so forth. If anything changes with that, those will be adjusted in the new public hearing on March 14th. But we're happy to take comments and questions tonight or, you know, public comment on this so we can take those into consideration for the council overall well, after the discussion of the moratorium tonight. So we still have to hold a public hearing. We'll hold one tonight, but we will close it. Then no action will be taken, and further action will be happening on March 14th if that is the direction of the council. Does that make sense? It makes sense, and I, I would suggest, Reg, I would, to me, I would have some sort of an explanation why we're doing back-to-back -back hearings on this yep. because it it insinuates to me that the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. Anymore. Yeah, well, well, for litigation risk, um, it was advised by our attorney not to have a full public hearing tonight yeah, because okay. if we have one notice that's wrong, even though the date and time is correct, we could technically hold it. If we make action on it, then there's possible litigation risk. If we say a planning commission and there was really actually no planning there commission no planning meeting tonight, up. there's a city council meeting. So yep. for adverse um, litigation adversity, we're trying to not get into any more litigation. All right. Bernie, did you want to? So, name and address. And Bernie Cal. 15281 Brockton Lane, Dayton. I need to fill out a sheet. Yep. At some point. At some point. It doesn't have to be done right now. Doesn't have to be, yeah. I just came tonight just to see what this was all about, uh, how long this. Uh, moratorium would be I would be all for it um, I think it should be the whole city but I was just wondering more information as far as what you were thinking about <coughs> for this plan um, did you get did you get a notice no okay I don't know did we just send them out to the where did we send 
Um, I would defer I to Kevin on that one. It was published in the paper. There wasn't That's individual it. notices sent out since the geographic area was the entire city. So it didn't oh, I see, individual yeah. property sure. owners. Okay. I've seen it on Facebook. Somebody right. put it on Facebook. I don't know who it was, but. It was actually published in the paper. Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. But do people so, get the paper anymore? That's Champlain Dayton Press. Unfortunately, so that's the official publication, yep. which I know. <laughs> yeah. they, we have to have by state statute. No, I so. know, but I mean, I'm just saying yep. people and, probably And don't. I think some of this stuff we do put on our Facebook page, mm -hmm. right? So yep. Yep. All agendas that we post prior to the meeting, which yep. would list a public hearing, yep. like kind of how she learned about it, would happen to any meeting. Whatever the, the outcome, um, whatever we decide to do will probably be in place until we're all comfortable enough to, to drop it. Um, we know that it's at least going to involve an amendment to the comp plan. Um, and that can vary from probably three months to... So, yeah, the longest time we can have a more time for is one year. Right. That's Only one year? Yeah, that's how yep. long we can have one. Oh. Yep. Doesn't mean we couldn't put another one in after that, but that has to be a one year. That's the longest we can have. To, I mean, last time we did one was one year. Yeah. Um, and that was in 2020 to 2021. Yep. So there will be more information that people will be able to, okay. Yeah. Yep. Definitely in, at that next council meeting, but. Um, in the, the March council meeting. Yeah, March 14th. Text. So Not two council next. meetings from now. Yep. Right. March 14th. March 14th. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Anybody else? Come on up. Thank you. Email address? Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. Uh, I'm Chris Covington, and address 14051, Wandale Lane North. I had two questions, really. Uh, I just you know, saw it in the paper or wherever it was. Uh, mm -hmm. So I was curious uh, what the purpose of the moratorium was, because I couldn't quite flush that out. And then I was curious, um, it... If I read it right, it, it seems to say that it's for low-density housing. Does that mean that the council wants to put in a bunch of high-density housing? I it's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> no. Those um, are my questions. I think the original discussion was, um, I, well, I can, I can give you my reasons, um, but I'm, I, I think I'm the one that originally requested this, but right now our planning is has got issues. Um, we're sh we're down on employees. We know we have a comp plan amendment coming, which involves roads in some of these areas. We have land use changes that'll go with the not only the roads, but probably some other changes. Um, and like I said, staff. I don't remember what the other reasons were. Um, yeah, we have a water and a sewer comprehensive plan that's currently being updated as well. That's, yeah. Um, which is the entire city's water and sewer comprehensive plan. Um, yeah, and I, there was another, yeah, another reason I had was that I want us to, to look at our planning process, but I um, guess that's it. So that was, that was the reasons. Okay, and for the second question as to high density to versus with, yeah, low I density. Yeah, I think the only reason we just picked on low density was the, the area that we were, that is initially impacted by it roads is, is predominantly, is low, predominantly density. Yeah, low density but oh. hey, the planning commission last meeting had a suggestion we use all housing I think that'll come into the discussion sure. um, so it's, it's not because we were gonna <laughs> put in apartments everywhere okay yeah. no. curious thank you no. You're welcome. anybody else Mayor, member of the council. Dave Peichel, 13161 Zanzibar Lane. Uh, just curious to know if this would affect a single homeowner who wants to build a single house, or, or is this not only homeowners, but also the low density? Um, I, I don't know a single home with a single property. Is that considered? I would defer to Kevin at Landform. Yep. Uh, the moratorium would affect whatever was put in place for it. So if it was for low-density housing, no new applications could come in for that to create new lots for low-density housing. 
However, an existing lot that has already been through and subdivided and created can still apply for a building permit. It doesn't stop building permits from being applied, you know, decks, fences, all of those, along with new single family construction. It, but it would, you know, if it was for low density housing or medium or high density or all of those, it would affect all of those products, single family, townhomes, apartment buildings. It would stop applications from coming in. Um, a moratorium effectively uh, closes the city from new applications and they just continue to process the ones that are effective prior to the moratorium being in place. So if we have the active applications we currently already have, we still process through and they can go through and go ahead. But any new active or new applications for the areas of the city or the type of land use for the city that would be covered under that moratorium are effectively not allowed to be taken in by the city. That's 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 for platting purposes. For platting, so for creating plans. new lots. So Correct. any any existing lots as part of a, a subdivision that's already happened, if there's you know ten of the forty lots have homes built on them, the other thirty lots can still have homes built on them because they've already been platted, they've already gone through the process, they're already approved, and they just require a building permit to go forward. Right. Yep. Okay. Okay. That's all I got. All right. Anybody else? Okay. I think we can close this guy. Um, so now uh, I did have a few questions. Um, did we get um, Jay's input as to? Um, so, so there's been some discussion on switching that to just simply not not approving zoning amendments. Yes. Uh, yep. That's what. Yep. That is what land foreman. Has suggested. Yep. Okay. Yep. And, and go ahead. Well, I I want to know. Are we fairly certain? Rock that, solid certain. Well. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> that 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 doesn't open the door to litigation any uh, any more likely than a moratorium. I'll use an example. Let's just say Brad wants. He re adheres to everything in our ordinances, and we say no, we're not going to do it. Can we, by by the zoning part of it, does that hold up as far as any litigation because we're denying the zoning change? So as far as the zoning changes, so you know every application has certain criteria that are laid out when you're reviewing it. So a CUP is different than a zoning amendment, different from a comprehensive plan amendment. As far as zoning amendments specifically, a zoning map change, you are not required to approve it unless it's the only designation that fits the land use. So if you were rezoning something from agricultural to a single zoning classification that met the land use, there, that legally would meet all the standards. However, most land uses, I think all of them, have more than one zoning category that fits within the land use. So in low density, you don't have to be just R1. You can be R1E, you can be R2. Mm -hmm. You can do all of those zoning changes. And the, when an application came forward, the city council could determine that the zoning change was not um, the use of the land that was anticipated or was not meeting some of the goals of the comprehensive plan. There's a lot of review authority with the zoning map amendment change. However, there are instances that if they met all of those standards, like with the preliminary plat, if they met all of the setbacks and all of the street width requirements and all of the other standards that go along with that, then the city is legally obligated to approve the application. So it's not, a moratorium is more effective for covering all of it, but a zoning amendment would, it essentially limits growth because if it's not inconsistent, if there's no utilities available and they want to do a sewer and water subdivision, we can deny it that it's premature because it, there's no sewer and water available. So there's a built-in growth management tool with those applications if it's not the appropriate time and place to develop on that lot or it's not the appropriate use for the lot. Okay. Yeah, the same thing would go for like streets. We don't have the street capacity to fulfill that property. Um, Brad might be a not a great example because he owns land that's currently available for mm -hmm. sewer and everything. Some of his land is not, so right. that's different. Um, but it would be like, a, for example, somebody who's in the 2020 area north of the t of in our transportation plan area. We don't have the infrastructure there, water, sewer, or roadways, one of the three, that could support that development. So we could say that is premature because we don't have the 
one of the three to support that development moving forward. Um, they could say, yeah, I'll build it for you, but that doesn't mean we have to approve it, though, from what I've understood. No, we're under yeah. no obligation if the property was one mile from the nearest sewer connection yep. and they wanted to extend the one extra mile and pay to do that. The city has the option to say yes to that, but they also have, there's no obligation to say yes to it. You can still say no. We mm -hmm. don't want to see that develop at this time, and we'd rather not Correct. You know, bond and do everything and have the construction improvements. I, I get that one. My concern is is that they meet everything otherwise. So it didn't sound like there's still some uh, I mean, there's still those options. There are still going to be those properties that would meet all the requirements. Right. And it would be not in the city's best interest to deny them in that case because of the possibility of, you know, it coming back in litigation. Right. So there is still that possibility, yeah. but it's not. But a moratorium is more solid, right? Yeah. Correct. A moratorium so is solid as long as it has reasonings with it, which yep. are the, the factors. Yep. You know, you have to establish those. So my only concern is is that some of this, this area um, is right where we plan on doing some um, transportation changes mm -hmm. and possibly land use changes. And we can get two months into this thing, and all of a sudden we get an application, a preliminary plat, meets everything, and we're stuck. And I, so this, this goal isn't to, to, to reduce development, in, in, at least in my mind, at all. That's not the point of this thing. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be stuck like we did with the lead development, where we suddenly have a mess. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's my concern. And so as part of that staff works with each applicant that comes in the door. So if they were looking to develop a certain property and we know that transportation is getting amended in that area, we would, one of the first meetings, we would let them know and say, this is, you know, being looked at for change. Therefore, any concept you draw will be subject to the changes made in that plan because they, staff would not, would make sure the plan is in place before that we would be able to say, I mean, you have the right to say, the road's not there. There's no adequate infrastructure in place right now because we don't have a plan, so the road isn't there yet, and we don't have the capacity to serve your development, so it's premature, and we can use well, that as findings of We fact. do have a plan, and I, again, I don't know if you're familiar with the Lee property, but um, the, the, the whole problem with that was, well, there's a number of problems with it. <laughs> But again, I, to, to kind of zero in on this, I don't want somebody coming forth with something and, and having it meet everything, mm -hmm. even though we know we're going to make some changes right there. Mm -hmm. um, and suddenly we're up against the wall and the 120 day thing hits, and they, you know, I, I don't want that to happen. And I, I, I'm concerned that if we do this, um, zoning amendment mm -hmm. thing that we're leaving ourselves open to that. Can I interrupt with a question? Yeah. So Zach, when we were talking, the transportation piece, we plan on having like a rough draft of transportation by the end of the month, right? Yeah, that's what the meeting next week at Hennepin County is supposed to get us to so that we can get a nice, a good quality update from the council to make sure that we are all on the same page of what the transportation plan amendment looks like. And we're having initial those conversations with the county, like I said, next week to begin that process. Um, the idea is to have a, and I say this, a soft approval from both head of the county, and then we have a uh, meeting set up in March with the Met Council to have soft approval from them so that we can, again, move forward with the land use amendments and so on and so forth. So I think the that formal process yeah. um, will take probably 120 or 180 mm -hmm. days or whatever the heck it takes to get Met Council to approve it because they have an well, unlimited so timeline to official approval. Six months. That, is, that yeah. assumes that we limit amendments to that transportation plan. I'm not too worried about the county. I mean, Correct. maybe I should be. I don't think I am. I don't, yeah. Um, I'll let worried. you know next week. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I think the question is, is we have a comp plan today where the road's going to go. By the end of the month, we will have an idea of where we think those roads will be changed. If an applicant comes in and says, I want to put a residential unit here, it's, everything's fine otherwise, but we know that there's going to be a road right in the middle of that. Can we say no, knowing that we already have future plans to change the current plan to a different plan and put a road through that lot? You can. You can. Well, what we would do is we would bring the application forward once that transportation amendment is in place. 
You can always, I mean, the option is there to put the moratorium on the bounds of the transportation plan amendment. That's a valid reason to say we don't want to develop anywhere between, you know, rough boundaries, Three Rivers Park District, South Diamond Lake Road, but down to the bottom of the city. And that's then, before they actually hand in the paper for a preliminary. Right. Right. Correct. So that's if we do the moratorium. But if we don't mm -hmm. do the moratorium and they came in and they said we want to do this, we said, no, we know we have a good plan to put a road through there. Can we still deny it? Legally, if they were in before the plan was in place, yeah. there's no we can request it, but we can't require it. If that makes sense. In place, being approved by the Met Council. Correct. Yeah, okay. formal Thank approval you. through the Met Council. This full the full six month process to get to s submit to the Met Council, get approval, and actually adopt it. Yeah, so it would be similar to what we did with the Lee property of our resolution yeah. with the Lee property is that we currently don't have an approved comp plan amendment for transportation, but we approve that development with a completely different configuration of the road than we currently have in our comp plan. Mm -hmm. um, technically, our comp plan says that road should be diagonal right through that property, and we don't have an approved comp plan to adjust that. Yeah. But we had them do that adjustment for us preliminarily, expecting that we were going to have a comp plan amendment with that transportation plan amendment in it. So we would work with them to say, no, no, that's not going to happen that way. It's going to be more well, south. Well, and I think the, the reason they worked with us mm -hmm. is because... The, the current that the then current option would eat up quite a bit of land Correct. and it would be the same way with and all so of these too with all the current things so all right now it's diagonal through all the property so that'll yeah. cut everyone's land right in half based on the current transportation plan so they're willing right. to probably help us out to go yeah we want to go north south to make more land use and and help you guys out to help uh, everybody out if we have a general idea um, and that w that general idea we should know by the end of this month so it's it's a matter of risk, I Correct. guess. And, 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 and yep. my, my, I mean, you know, anytime you look at risk, you look at the ups and downs, and I'm still not seeing a down from a moratorium. To me, the best thing would be the moratorium. I, I just, yeah, but the yeah. moratorium also sends a signal. See, I get that. I like, want to hear like, what that means. Send yeah, a signal. well, I mean, if, if, if you go to a business today, they're supposed to be open and they're closed. You might never go back to that business, sure. right? You go to a restaurant, yeah. you want to try it out. They're supposed to be open on Mondays. They're not open. Sure. Oh, they're not. There's no reason to go back there. They're closed. So, mm -hmm. so we same concept of like. So we just had a year-long moratorium, yep. and building didn't skip a beat. Yeah, but the the economic climate was way different though at the end of 21 than it I is at the end that. of 22. Yeah, I get that. And we the council's been talking about that for six months. So, I, I mean, I know everyone's on board with that. That like, And I know we have, what, 750 houses that are already approved that can still be built, and I understand that piece as well. But I think all we're going to do is we're just going to end up snowballing development that's going to happen anyways to happen another big boom. And one might argue that that moratorium in Dayton may have been part of the problem that caused the big boom or may have no. made it even bigger than before because you took all this housing that couldn't get built over a year and then pushed it at the but, end of that year. But that assumes that... The what purpose of this is to slow down development? It's not. I'm not saying it's not. I, I, I okay. think the reason to do it because we don't, it makes sense to say, and that's why I asked the question, we, we know that this X pattern, as the term that gets used all the time, is not what the council wants. It has said that over and over again for the last six months that I've been coming to council yeah. on a regular basis, yeah. right? And we need to change it. And I don't disagree with that because we don't want to have people making plans and then knowing the roads aren't going to be there at all. Right, that just doesn't make sense. Same with having city sewer and water. We've got to make sure the city sewer and water is in place then to fit those road needs and the growth yep. and how it looks. The same with the zoning, right? Because right now some of our zoning doesn't even match up. So I'm not saying this stuff doesn't need to be worked out. I right. was hoping that we get an answer of, well, if we know, like we've posted on our website, hey, we're going to be changing the plans that we've submitted to Met Council. Right. And then once it's submitted but hasn't been approved, then we can deny things. I was trying to find a way around no, I get putting it. the closed yep. door the close sign on the door. That's what I'm trying to find a way around is like, what legal options do we have? And I don't know if we need to spend more time talking with the lawyer or, or the right lawyer to figure it out and what others have done. But I, I would like to find a middle ground that's between saying no to everything in this area or no to just everything in general um, or and, and wide open because we need yep. this and we can't make people work with us. So far, like you said, the lead development's been great. They've worked with us, kind of figured it out, and it may have worked in their benefit to some extent. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if it works in the benefit of what the city wants, that should be our ultimate goal. Um, if it helps them too, sure. fantastic. Win-wins are always great. And so I think we just, I, I am hesitant to put the closed door, closed sign on the front door. If, if, if we can find another option that fits the needs of the city that isn't that far. 
Yeah, as long as we don't run a, run a significant risk, I, I'm okay with that too. Yeah. I have no problem with that. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't think you, you know, would. I, and, and it's not, um, you know, I, I, well, yeah, there's there's a few other areas I think. I don't, I, I, we're kind of focused on the, the X, but I don't think that's, that's all of it. We have because transportation I think we're issues be, throughout the whole city. We're going to be looking at land use also, and I don't think yep. we're going to be looking at land use just there. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, yeah. So, right. yeah, if we can, if we can find some other answer, um, I think regardless if somebody comes to the city with a preliminary plat, whether we have a moratorium or whether we're going to outright tell them we're going to deny your zoning amendment, I think they still hear no. Correct. So, I. I if we can, if we can go there, about I'm okay with it. But if you go to a restaurant and you ask for the shrimp, not a shrimp that night, you might go back again and ask for shrimp again. That's my mindset. I'm just trying to yeah. find a way to like. Well, they know the moratorium will end. Yep. So. Well, true. I don't know about the the, the the restaurant deal. I went to the bank today, and the bank's closed on Tuesdays and Thursdays. The lobby because they don't have enough help. Yeah. But you got to go back to your bank because your money's there, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> That's a little bit different. You have to go there the bank. Then you if you want to get your money out. So. Um, personally, I think uh, as far as the uh, the low density, if, if the moratorium comes, I think it should be across the board because all building affects the transportation, all, all building affects the sewer and water. And that was the Planning Commission's suggestion, and the more I thought about it, I, I agree with I agree. That. I agree with it. Yeah, you're looking for, I just want to make sure it's clear, when you say everything, everything, do you mean all commercial, industrial, across and residential across the entire city, or just specifically residential or specifically well, in the area or if there's reason to look at uh, I mean I think commercial we tended to rely on landform is that correct yeah I mean so landform is our planner currently so we like them well, for everything well, and that was in the, in the past year or two so oh, we have sure. anyways I think so um, I, I don't if there's a reason to include that I'd be okay with that it's just that that's a bigger I think that's a bigger risk because if they come and we say no, they will find another spot. Now, sure. we haven't so far we haven't had a problem with the volume of uh, you know commercial, but um, I, I think as far as we just have current applications, so we need to let them know mm -hmm. if they're going to say develop a moratorium on everything. Now we got to let them know because we have some that are right. even come to the planning commission in March, and if you're going to say you ain't building no matter what, now we're telling them for more commercial or this is commercial. Yeah. Commercial is this commercial like? Retail commercial or commercial like warehouses? Uh, okay. One warehouse and one mini storage. Yeah, yeah one, one mini storage and then uh, warehouse. Opus is the the, the warehouse. Type warehouse and then Semstone. Semstone, yep. So that's a oh, industrial that's warehouse. That's all in the eighty-one area, right? So Correct. I, yep. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Did you? What did you spew? I'm not as uh, I'm not comfortable with with cutting out all. Development, commercial, industrial, yeah. and it's because I don't think the issues are the same. We we haven't got the same concerns about transportation um, with the area that's being developed uh, for industrial and commercial. Yeah. Um, I agree. I think that we would be unnecessarily putting the brakes on some things there. Uh, we don't have the same planning issue. I think the broader broader thing for me is that. The the zoning doing it with zoning, you know, we can do that if that's if that's a consensus we arrive at. I think that's got a lot of holes in it, and I also think it sends a, a kind of a weird message to anybody that wants to be developing that, you know, maybe we will, maybe we won't. We're, we can use this zoning tool. Um, moratorium is pretty cut and dry, and it's got an end date on it, uh, so nobody's going to like it no matter how we come at this, but. I think that's a more clear, clearly defined. Um, the other, the other piece of it, you know, we're we're often accused of of doing bad planning or planning through the rearview mirror, and I think that's really ultimately the goal of this is to kind of get out of that mode, give us a chance to, you know, get some staff on board, get some some of these studies done, and and uh, update our plans so that. Um, you know, we're looking we're looking more forward, or at least in the present, than we are kind of backward, which it feels like we do a lot now. If, um, let's say, Jay Roberts, there he, he put a stamp of approval on a 
zoning amendment process and not a moratorium would that change your your attitude or we need to do something and if that's the you know if that's a viable approach I you know I could come around to that I'm not there right now yeah I, <clears throat> my my other problem with it it seems a little um, not um, open um, is that we're we're saying we're open for business but don't bring us a, a plan because we're gonna reject it it just seems like this is a very clear message but I I, I can I don't know I could be swayed I guess if I knew that we'd be safe with a, um, a zoning amendment path but I still want to make it very clear to people that this is why we're doing this and we are doing this I think we have responsibility to the citizens to make sure that everything we're doing is open. Well, is going to pass any litigation that may come through. To me, the, the uh, zoning things has too much gray area, and I don't want to get involved in gray area. To direct to the point is the best. To me, that's the best approach. And I, I don't really personally, if, if you have the uh, a moratorium for six months, it's not going to hurt anything, I don't think. Yeah, there, there is a delay in the process too it's not like it um, uh, um, for example somebody wants to come in and develop something today they don't even see the planning commission until April right. at the earliest right I mean so when's the last time someone came in to develop what is mainly we have residential yep yeah, we have one that's in just to preliminary discussions and it's high density and it's on 81 so yeah so none in the area none in the, the area biggest zero. Concern to us. and zero. when's the last time we've had one well, in that area that's that's, that's, that's assuming it's one area I don't think it is yeah, we have. That's the only one we have currently. That's not on the planning commission packets, which is commercial and industrial. Okay. Um, we only have one current developer even looking at anything right now, and that's just preliminary docs. Yeah. Um, again, the earliest they would get in is April, most likely May. Um, that would be concept plan at planning commission. Then there's a that concept plan goes to the second council meeting in May, and then by the time they get through concept concept plan, they're in probably at the earliest if they can flip it in like couple days they can get it to July one July 1st planning commission meeting for pl preliminary plat most likely they won't based on comments that we'll have back to them and to talking points and discussions that's what the concept plan is for so really they're looking at August um, the first August meeting for planning commission for preliminary plat and that would mean the second meeting in August for preliminary plat approval so um, if you think about it, really, it, t it takes a long Six time months. to go through that process. Just if you don't even put a moratorium on anything, you just say, "Here's the process laid out for you." Um, with the, and that's not even counting 120-day review times and everything else right. that we have in our back pocket. That's using 60-day review times. Yeah, yeah. that's and six months. That's almost the same as the moratorium, either way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah. roughly, and that and that's after we know have preliminary discussions. So I talked with them um, probably two weeks ago now two or three weeks ago and that was saying that yep it looks good you can here's the layout for this property here's everything you need to know and that was two weeks ago and I've heard zero since then right so moratorium would have zero impact on their plan uh, yeah that's at somebody that's My coming in today you know that one though is and not, not just that one but mm. um, again if we're two or three months into this and we make a land use change yep. which again I suspect we're gonna look at yep that's they totally, yep. They just wasted a lot of money. Correct. Agreed. Mm -hmm. And so that's a totally different aspect of the land use change is is, an, is a viable, I think, right. area to look at. Is, you know, if somebody's coming in for a plan and it's like you're coming in for median density and that's now going to be commercial for land use that we're thinking, well, then uh, that should be a, obvi obviously a big red flag that we're changing land use in that area, which that's a complete obvious yes. And I agree with the moratorium or however we need to do with that process. But for now... Right now, where we're at today, I mean, you're talking six months just to get somebody in for preliminary plat. Now they're talking; uh, they're talking with us today. That doesn't mean somebody in three months that comes in and says, "We want to do a low density development in the 2020 land area," and we say, "Okay, well, that sounds good." So we'll see you in about eight months total. You know, cause then they get through that and planning commission and concept plan, and then back again because um, it's roughly 30 days before you get on planning commission meeting. And based, based on our processes, so just so to, just for moratorium, we're going to do a whole lot because if they did today and start the process, it'd still be about six months in either way. Within the same Pre window, pretty much the same window, yeah. Yeah. and and it's it's I know it's hard to like picture that of the timeline, but that's mm -hmm. roughly the timeline of how they come in, 
it seems like it takes forever to get through a thing, and we might see something four months ago, and then we see it today. And we're like, didn't we already prove that? And it's probably concept plan or preliminary right. plan right. Yep. Um, before we even see the final product of what we're really looking at. But the statement about uh, it doesn't really affect the industrial area. I mean, I think you, I think you're meaning with the county about transportation on yep. 81. Correct? 81. Yep, that's correct. So it really does affect all of it. I don't know that it affects what they would do or what we would for land use, building but it, or anything like that yeah, around that. It, so, yeah. it could. I mean, if they come back and said, "Hey, we're going to put, hey, we're gonna put a, a road right a big there or something now. roundabout yeah. on yeah. territory <laughs> yeah. or yeah. something yeah. bizarre." I don't think that happening. Does. Does. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to happen. I don't either. I don't but think so either. Could make for that, but that won't happen. I, I I just don't want to get caught in any gray area where uh, we're denying something and then all of a sudden three months later. You know, Correct. Agreed. Yep. Well, the mor moratorium, we're denying everything, and then uh, all of a sudden, tomorrow, we're accepting everything. I'm okay with it, that. It, either way, if, if the moratorium, you're not going to see development for, if you do a year-long moratorium, you're not seeing development for 18 months at the earliest. Yeah. yeah. Mm, just so that everybody's work by the time they go to the development moratorium, then we start yeah. the process all over again. So, so if we're saying we need six months, the more we could get six months without the moratorium at this point in time, because we're going to have six months regardless. Correct. Yeah. And, and we're that's saying we need six months. That's what I'm saying. That talked about. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's probably the best timeline. I don't know that we zeroed in on that. But well, I'm. I mean, I I told all the staff when I met with them, I'm going to push them all to work faster. So <laughs> the speed of government is too slow for me, <laughs> and they all know it. So I mean. Th these uh, this is people's livelihoods trying to get down it, at the same it time, and so it isn't staff. Go, man. Gonna hold I've all, often been wondering that myself. <laughs> on this, on, this, on the, the amendment, I, I don't know. know that it's going to be staff. It's going to be all the inputs. I understand. And then the Met Council and the rest. Yep. Well, the Met Council, we, I mean, once we submit it, uh, I think yeah. The good idea to is to have soft approval before we send anything in. That's the idea. Yeah. And by soft yeah. approval, I mean like they've given their blessing verbally. It says, "Yep, that will work for us." Now we just have to follow our. Process. Six month process to get it actually hard approved. You know, um, the idea is to have it all basically squared away so we can start the next process ASAP, which is land use and staging plan that follow that transportation plan amendment that we're looking at doing. And those, yeah, I forgot about that staging plan will also be. Yep. So yeah, it's. Mm -hmm. I, I guess. Rolls in. Well, the one thing, you know, that we'll say about a moratorium is we, it's a defined amount of time. Yep. And it does. We've got things that we need to get done. The, this transportation plan, the, the land use, the staging plan, I think is, I don't know how it doesn't come into play. Um, I think the, the sewer and water update stuff that's being worked on, um, you know, is important information to know at least about our current capacity, which I'm not sure we, well, we have a 100% handle on it, and it's a 23-year-old study is the last one that was, uh, last one that's done. So. You know, my point is that if we've got a defined end date to it, it, it forces us to get our work done rather than a, a zoning approach is kind of a soft approach, and we can string that along for years, and I, I don't like that idea at all. Sure. You know, well, we didn't get this done yet, and we're going to, so we still need to, you know, kind of say no on some of these things. And I, it just feels a lot more straightforward. It also holds us a little more accountable to, to get some things done in that period of time. Sure. And, you know, the other side of it is that it, the market is soft right now. We do nothing, and, and we still have that time. I mean, there isn't a big demand, but, um, you know, I think we need to get those things done, and, and having a timeline attached to them would be, would be better in my view. So is the idea to let the Planning Commission come to us with a recommendation on the 14th, what they feel is the right path forward? Or are we giving them guidance, or what are we trying to do? Yeah, here so we today, need to po if no, you want to have it on the fourteenth meeting of March, we'd have to post it before the pu the before the planning commission meeting, okay. which is the unfortunate part. It would be great to get the planning commission's input, but unless I'm wrong on the dates, uh, no, try. no, you're right. Okay. Um, yeah. So what I'm hearing is. A moratorium is wanted. I think we need to have the discussion on whether it's the entire city or a specific area. Yeah, we'll entire city. Because if we yeah. we do it, we just need to make sure we got to post it before the planning commission meeting, which is fine. But we got to know what we're posting, and that's the reason why we're closing. We closed it tonight because whatever we post most likely will be totally different than what we just did. And then I'm hearing it was also for mm -hmm. high density, low density, all the residential, residential, so not residential. commercial. 
And my, and my understanding of what the notice that went out, and maybe Jay <coughs> had some input into this, but my understanding was the notice didn't say what. We didn't specify on a specific type of land use, but we did include the entire city in the moratorium notice. Right, so, so why would why would we not be able to do something along those lines? Would it be not smart to do something along those lines? Do you want a moratorium for the entire city? No, we, we don't need. I mean, you're also people if. If we're not doing a moratorium on the north half of the city, and someone wants to move the north half, then they don't have to show up to the open forum to talk about it and try to convince us otherwise. Well, the problem is we don't necessarily know what land use changes we're making until we have that discussion. So, I mean, so you're wanting it on getting, the entire city? Well, what I was getting at was, I, I think so, but what I was getting at was <clears throat> um, the classifications. Mm -hmm. There was no classifications put. No, in, there was right? no classifications posted with the public hearing notice. Right. Um, it's, in, it's in the staff report, but staff's recommending that there has to be specific, specific reasons to adopt an interim moratorium ordinance. So yeah. you have to state why you're doing it. Yep. And that, is, that that's the accountability piece. So it's based on the transportation plan. The moratorium can then either sp set a time limit or say that when we adopt the transportation plan amendment, that's when the moratorium comes off. So if it ends up being a nine month process for the transportation plan amendment, the moratorium's in place for nine months or whatever it is. It's harder when they tie it to reasons like lack of staff or yeah. other things like that because what, when you have the new plan starting in March, is that staff then? There's no, it's not as clear There's on no when, the, when the process. Yeah. Yep, I get that. I, I, I think the two easy ones are land use and transportation plan. Mm -hmm. um, staging might be part of that too, but um, yeah, the land use and staging plan will be done at the same time. It'll be done concurrently. Because right. You you want to stage your correct land use as you want yep. them. And and, and I say you as the council, not directed yeah. to you. <laughs> and that would be after we have that have yeah. the transportation portion solidified. So yeah. the real key is is, it, is the transportation issue going to be solved by like August September? One hundred percent. And, and by and by transportation and land use, you mean? Yes. yes. Oh, and land use. Well, transportation. That's our main. Well, that's transportation. Our main deal. I think that should take. That shouldn't take too long. Minutes, I said that yeah. as long as everything goes well with Hennepin <laughs> County and that council, it should be. Right. right. I I'm thought the last meeting we talked about it was going to be six, seven months to get it done. That's to get the amendment through. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. To get the amendment through the whole process, we have an idea. From that council. Yeah. We have an idea. Yeah. We'll ho hopefully have an idea by the end of March. I think of where we're at. We're going to get bogged down in the land use. I think is where yeah. we're going to get bogged down. That's correct. No, I would. I would agree with that. And and that would be our reasoning. Mm -hmm. um, and land use, uh, I think we'll we'll see is is not going to be limited to to that area. That transportation, those changes. But and that that just helps staff draft the moratorium ordinance so that it depicts what your direction is and then planning commission can review that and bring a recommendation forward to you yeah my concern would be as if we're too specific on the notice and then the planning commission comes in and points out a bunch of things that we hadn't thought about now we're stuck again mm -hmm. that's the kind of the conflict with having to post the public hearing notice before the planning commission meets so yeah. we can keep it generic because as long as we have it covered so wouldn't want to post for low density and then do more than just that for land uses, yeah. but if we post it for everything and then trim back, that will meet the statutory requirements for posting it. And I, and I think, um, so at our next meeting, I would assume we would talk about this somewhat um, to get a better idea of where we're going. February 28th you're talking? Um, is that March or the 14th? March 14th you're talking. March, well, so by then we'll have the Planning Commission's inputs. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and I think then we could be, be a little um, a little more clear on areas of the city that because there's clearly some areas of the city that are untouched by probably land use and obviously the transportation but um, mm -hmm. I mean land use we've even talked about some of the stuff on the north side so mm -hmm. I just I, I don't know I don't know what what our answer will be then but isn't all the north side current land pretty much already set up for the most part when we look in your office the other day? Um, as in set up, what do you mean? Like plotted. Most of it's plotted out or already. No, no there's a lot of that land that's not even. Uh, basically, everything 
west of Riverwalk slash Diamond View Estates is unplatted. Uh, in current? In current? Uh, no, it is no, not yeah, current. Yeah, but in yeah. current is my point, right? Because um, we moved something into current, we have to well, prove that. What is 2020 current or not? Kevin and I debate this every day, so I don't know. I but, still don't um, understand. I understand, understand it like, either, but I was told 2020 is not current. So yeah, technically, there's correct. there's no current land on the north side of town. However, there is uh, like five parcels that are 2020 land. But we would have to approve to move them to current, and we could deny that if we wanted to. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Legally, if there was 2020 land and someone said move this to current, we could no say nope. Obligation to approve any comprehensive plan amendments. The council has all the yeah. discretion to so let me, deny let me ask you this. So on the north Let's side, it's not had, an issue. We had a, a 10 acre chunk. Well, it is if we change. If we want to change plan use. It is a big issue. But not if it's in current, because we wouldn't have to turn anything down. You okay? Uh, um, well. So <laughs> let's say we get to 20, got some place. A chunk of land is in 2020. And we hit 2030. Does that land get forced into current? How does, how does that work? I mean, it, clearly it's not going to happen. Pr for prior to hitting period. that Is turn of a date, I staff would come forward with an amendment to bring the 2020 land into current. Okay. Because that so would be the end of the time period where it would be. You know that that time period is a one decade, and so right. that decade is then passed, and it would then be in current. But my point is, there's no land that's not. There's almost no, if not no, land on the north side of town that's even in current that we have to worry about this moratorium. Um, that's not already like set up, plotted out, figured out. Correct. That is, that is not true. Uh, you have you have 2020 land, like I said, just east of Riverwalk, yeah. but that's it. There's I'm no just talking about current, current, not yeah. 2020, just current. Yeah, so the current already land moved is not available because 2020 land we still have to approve to move to current, and with without with the moratorium, we can I say no to that. Yeah, no, that wasn't. I guess that's that wasn't my my point. Is I'm not too. Oh, you're talking about as far as the the reach of the moratorium. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about posting the moratorium. We should post moratorium for what we're actually thinking it, so nope, that we don't. We won't know this area. until we. Yeah, but my concern is we're getting a whole Fernbrook realignment debacle again, where all that happened because of some misinterpreted information, <laughs> and we had half the city up in arms because we did not do a good job of explaining why that was actually happening, which had to do with the Lee property and holding that land, right? It had nothing to do with us actually looking at, the city looking at throwing funds to change anything. And so if we're going to post a moratorium for the whole city, it could cause a similar issue where now people are worried about things that they don't need to even worry about. Um, That's true. I, I don't disagree with that. That's true. <laughs> so I, I think if we're going to post it, we should try to be... I'm okay being a little more broad if we need to, but well, being somewhat more specific isn't a bad thing either because you don't want the whole... Okay, so what's the answer? I don't know. Right. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> Bingo. I'm, I'm asking you what you want. Are That's we, what I'm asking you. Okay. I don't know that we know what we want until else. we talk about this. Okay. This well, is not rocket science. Okay. I, don't, so, I don't get it. So the simple way to do that is anything north of South Diamond Lake Road in current that you can actually build... Two weeks from so now. more term would be everything south of South Island Lake Road. That's I'm get that's I'm, tr I'm yeah. trying to find a solution. Yeah, there's yeah, yeah there's nothing north of South okay. Island Lake Road that's there's, there's your solution. Right so there. so there's a short term one. Yep. So that's what we could post for. It's sure. more specific at least. And I don't think that messes anything. I have to look well, not, that, the not that I'm aware of. You no. can almost even go out south of 117th, or not 17th, 125th. Probably, I think so. Just leave it there. Because everything else, everything north of 125th is right. 2050. Is that park too? 20, is 2050 right. land or it's park? Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Or it's developed so already. So, even better. Mm -hmm. okay. Um. And there's yeah. nothing on the east side that's. That's Graco. No, on the on the on the east side. Oh, east side. That would be. Oh, yeah. sorry. West side's Graco. East side would be. Three Rivers Park. Goes yeah, all the way through. No, there's nothing there. There's, a couple farms. there's nothing through. Yeah, it's all the way through to the um, Champlain. So uh, all the golf course is done. That's the untouchables. Yeah, Sundance so Greens is Sundance Greens is technically already done. Like we've already approved that final plat. Right. So they come in for twelfth uh, yeah. edition. Yeah, there's, yeah, that's yeah. already done. It's already you know, done. That's through. already part of the process. He can right. they can yeah. add right now today and say, okay, we can't really about that because it's already been preliminary platted. And the same with Cypress Cove and yep. all of that. That's all yep. done. And already. the New Braven Trails chunk too, right? Right. That's yep, done. that's already yeah. done. Yep. That's already Majority done. of it's so already done. Well, so point. there we are. There's your solution. There, there's a spot in current. Yes. The yep. West of River Hills. There is not a yeah. spot. There's a that's 2020 land. You're talking Randy's land. Yeah, you're talking Dolheimer's land. Yeah, yeah right. that's, that's that's 2020. Current. I think that's in current. It's 2020. It's 2020. Okay. It's 2020. 
I promise you, I wouldn't lie to you. 100%. 100%. <laughs> I wouldn't lie to you. Zach and I were looking we're good. Good. on Thursday when we were covered. I, I'm ago. okay with that if, if we know we got all our bases covered. So can we do uh, – my question I, is I, it has to be a boundary, and I just want to make sure that – can we do like an imaginary boundary, Kevin? I don't know how this ever works, but imaginary boundary just taking 125th and south of a development moratorium. And I, at this point I'm hearing just residential. That's what I'm hearing, or is it everything? Because the only reason I say everything is if we include everything in there, then we have some – ones on the south side of 81 that are going to be impacted at the yeah, planning commission meeting. That's why I'm asking no, the question. You're, you're concerned about that, right? Uh, well, if you're going to bring transportation into it, it affects all of it. it. I mean, it does. Do you expect to see changes down there, though, Scott? Do I expect S to see changes? South of 81. South of 81? Yeah. Well, from our side. It's going to happen, but I don't yeah. know if it's going to happen in six months. Yeah, from I mean, our side, though. But for the county is going to do what they're going to do. Yeah. We can't predict that. But are we going to I don't well, do we got anything going on? We, we just found out there's a couple things that there? might be going on. Oh, okay. so, sorry, sorry, two questions. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry, is there right? something going on? You just sorry. said that. Uh, yep, we have one. We have one there. potential apartment building going in on the Stensley property. That's been. So, we've so had two that. different developments on that property that but have an apartment complex. Really affects transportation. That's residential. It doesn't. It doesn't affect transportation in the fact that it's. It affects our roads, yes, but it doesn't affect the plan that we have. We already have it planned out. The that layout. Yeah, the the layout moratorium, they wouldn't be able the to come in. The moratorium, they would not be able to come in. So, for example, when we, say, when we say transportation, we don't mean the roadways that are physically there right now. We mean Where the, the planned are. new roadways. Future. That do. Yeah, yeah, correct. That's so when we say transportation. getting lines on the map and here's what we want to do. Over the next but if you do six months, mm -hmm. yep. All of that's going to take six months just to plan it out. Again, I would argue if we so need the more time, if it takes six months to get there anyways, and, and, and 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 more times to be long, six months, exactly. more time we don't need the more time. Us. So the question but was, even if, if they you went through it at, at fast speed, yes, you're still talking six months. That just walks okay. us through it. So, so there's yes. still disagreement on the more time. <laughs> I see that. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to get past so this. So Here we go. <laughs> do you agree that if somebody comes forward and meets all the requirements in three months, even though we're just about ready to submit it to that council that we're stuck? Yeah, we're stuck. Okay, so why would we run that risk? So do it for three months then. It How long do you <laughs> want to do it for? <laughs> I think what the mayor's point is, he's asking you, if we're stuck, then why would we? Why would even we do just, it? Just due to our meeting cadence, it sounds like it'd be right. almost well, let's damn near get impossible. To a, an answer if, you, here. if you've taken action on a transportation plan amendment, but you haven't got formal approval through the council, you can still enforce that document because the city council has adopted an amendment. Yep. So the process, the extra three months for the Met Council to review and actually stamp it and formally adopt it, that is outside of the process that we look to approve. So the City Council okay. takes a transportation yep. plan amendment, okay. approves the layout and everything that goes along with it to, for staff to then submit to the Met Council, that is in effect adopted by the City. Yep. So you can still use that document in, uh, when an application comes in as part of the Once review. it's adopted. So Zach, how much time does Once the City it's adopted by the time? City. By the yes. city, yes, and, yes. and I can see that taking six months. I uh, don't know if it'll take that long. Like I said, we're hoping to have soft approvals by end of March, so I would assume by April we'll have a actual yep. physical amendment back in the city council's hands to approve to then submit to submit council. And we can always renew it, right? If at the end of six months we would have one six months more, we another six months, right? Moratorium. Yeah. 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 Yep. So you're saying it's going to take two months. You're saying it's going to take six. Do you think it's take six months? Why don't we just cut out the middle and say four? I don't think it's going to affect anything, anyways. Three, four, two, I'm fine with it. I would recommend tying it to the actual transportation plan Good. amendment so Perfect. that it ends nice. when you've adopted well, the transportation plan. Yeah. Well, my, my problem to David's Fair. point is is then that leaves us open and if that's just to continuously take forever. And if we have a line in the sand that if we've got to get stuff done, we've got to get done by, that holds us to a timeline. And when you don't have a timeline, stuff just slips and slips and slips. I like, oh, the done oh, I, like I like the timeline. I like the timeline. And we can renew it. So if we do I have no issue with If we do months three months, months and then... So I don't think we need six uh, months. I think got, that's all right, let's get this so, done. Sounds like here. we got a six-month moratorium. That's what I'm hearing. One uh, twenty-fifth is the north boundary. Um, south boundary is we're south. not sure yet. So uh, are we sure that one hundred twenty-fifth? Because I'm not there, sure. There is no current. Is that cover there is no current. Oh, that's okay. current. Twenty-fifth yeah. is everything between South Diamond Lake, um, actually north of the city. I don't think there's anything in. There's twenty thirty land. Um, yeah. on the north side of town, okay. but that's a long ways away. So yeah. I would say there, we are... There is there is some current to the north. Where? Yeah, which one is it? would be a factor. I don't know if there's been any interest, but the, the land south of South Diamond, west of Grantstrom Orchard, and east of the park is in current. I have the map up. 
Oh, is it? Um, um, and then Balsam Lane as well, which is probably just the last undeveloped lot on the north side on River Road. But those those are areas that are sure. current. Um, and then way on the west side, um, I guess that's beyond the extension of 125th, but the area that Graco owns. Yeah, that's Graco, yep. Um, so if and they aren't going to develop anything effective. at this point. I'm not, I don't think I'd be worried about that I one. I wouldn't be worried about that one. No. Uh, what were those other ones? The it's South, be the South Diamond East? East, or what? east of the park and west of uh, Grandstrom Orchard. I think there's a little gravel road and a ground blank on the name if it's Teakwood. Oh, Teakwood. 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 Yeah, um, I'll say Teakwood runs on that. Is that? Hmm. That's where a single house is going. It was. Oh, yeah. Proposed yeah, to be seven, Just looking right? at the staging. Oh, well, that might be already it's taken. One of our dirt roads. That might be taken. It's Teakwood. It's yeah. Teakwood. Yeah. It's Teakwood. Yeah. 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 Mm, let me see. That's not. Mark and Gordy's area. Christopherson. Yeah, can you share on the screen so everyone can see? I this cannot. Is, this is what I wanted to avoid is missing something. So if we're, if we're solid on this. Option. That was on the website. Okay, yep, yep. So it, play the there is a portion that is. Final. Yep, there is a portion that's current. That is correct. Yeah. So basically, it's south of South Diamond Lake Road. So at the corner of Pine View and South Diamond Lake Road. Um, that's in current. That, yeah, that little. Basically, between there, Ooh. south, yeah. west, yeah. towards yeah. the park is current. That is correct. I've had no interest in anybody yeah, I there, so I like would the see routes. minimal, and then Balsam Lane area, which is there's only one current lot available in Balsam Lane area, and that's right on Dayton River Road and Balsam Lane, and we've had zero interest in that. Yeah, and I don't. Oh, that's on the corner. Right? That's on the corner. Yep, of across the street from the gas station, uh, uh, Dayton stop. I could see that getting the land used. And again, is it mixed use? It's mixed use anyway. It's mixed it? use. Oh, yeah. we're good. If you had interest in uh, 30 days from now, it's still going to take six months. To it's going to take a, a, a minimum. <laughs> and I mean, <laughs> when I say a minimum, a minimum of six Which months. Okay. okay. All right. So we're uh, good with staging plan far right. With north of 125th. If you do, if you or do south of south 125th. 125th. Yeah. Basically, that there is. I guess I I misspoke. There is two spots that are current. So you can see on the map there, between the park reserve, um, Pine View, and so. The where the park area. is, Pine View and South Diamond Lake, there's a little chunk that's current. It would be southwest of that to the mark to the park. Um, I could drive point to Jason. Yeah, he's got up on the screen. It's that, yeah. It doesn't. Okay. Zoom in here. Tetris piece. No, right I can't here. zoom. But yeah. Of course, can't zoom. The current color. I want to zoom in without finding. Um, hmm. Okay, so there we go. I got it. I got it. I got it. It's right at the center. Yeah. All right. Right here is where I'm talking. Right here. Uh, it won't even let me highlight. Um, <laughs> we can see your mouse. Yeah, we can see it though. So. Oh, that beige color. That beige tan color. Yep, right. Beige tan color here. So this is where City Hall is, just to south of the green one. Here's Pine View and South Diamond, and then there's that. Oh. Um, this is Grandstrom Orchards. This is the one on the hill where the power line goes through, uh, right by the water tower. Mm -hmm. And so, this is the left of that. This is mostly wetland, and then these couple of homes on this area. But this is like a, this is a stables or a yep. horse farm or yep. like that. And then Balsam Lane. That's all I want. But again, we only have one technically open lot. Um, the one closest to the river road. Yep. Yeah, correct. It's like right here. Yep. That's open, so that's there's only a few spots, and like I said, we've had zero interest in this spot of I pine, the one pine view. Gas and as well. Yeah, I don't see that one being developed either. But yeah, so there's a few, I guess. So I did miss both. Miss okay. Both. okay. I but, apologize, but, but they're low risk. They are very, very low risk, and like I said, if you did 125th, yeah. technically you'd leave this spot open, which is behind um, Spears Manufacturing over by Graco, and that's owned by Graco, and there's no plans for it. So I would okay. anticipate very, very minimal. Risk. So well. south of 125th and north of 81. If you do, yeah, if you do north of 81, that does not impact the three um, current applications we have. It would uh, uh, would affect the current residential one that we have. Well, but that would be it. Or not and by current residential, I mean the s initial talks we've had with them. That's it. But the the back up a little bit on what you just said. Yep. So I would want to include the Sensley property. Correct. Yep. So that would be if you so did, if that. you did, yep, yeah. if you did south of 125th, imaginary line across the entire mm -hmm. city there, yeah. mm -hmm. and then north of 81, so in that right. trapezoid-looking area, yep. you would um, eliminate the Stensley property, 
yeah. from yeah. the current, from at least the development moratorium for six months. And that's what we're oh, saying. It included in the moratorium. It would include it. Yeah. Yeah. It would include yeah. it. So there, but then it would exclude the three current applications we have for current um, commercial and industrial applications that we have going to the planning commission in, in March. And that's if because those those three are on the south side of eighty one. All right. So. My geography's bad. Can we use longitudinal or latitudinal uh, lines? Whatever the correct <laughs> answer is um, <laughs> there to like, if we can't use the street, can we just use that in place of? So based on what I'm hearing, ba what we look to do, or what staff would bring to the planning commission, would be south of 125th to the western boundary of the city, then jogging with 81 to the southern boundary of the city, over to the eastern boundary, and then back up to the imaginary line of 125th. Correct. That would be the geographic yep. area we would include so you would part of the moratorium. You would exclude, not include in the moratorium, the area that we have the current three applications on, which would be south of 81. And those are all commercial. Those are all commercial and industrial, yes. But you would include the property that you're mentioning, or the one that we've seen two apartments on, um, the Stensley property that we have the current. Mm -hmm. And again, preliminary talk, so they've done yeah. very, very minimal at this point. Um, and happy okay. to talk with them and let them know that and what we're thinking. And you, you want commercial three. Right yeah, I think you should have those where the they get it figured apartment out. Yeah. There was townhouses in the last go around. So that works, that's fine. And if we would include everything. So it would be and commercial, industrial, industrial residential, apartments. everything would be included, which I, I think is the correct option that makes sense with staff. Have. If we're going to do a development Thank moratorium, you. it should be for everything. And the reason being is because in 2020, there, a lot of that land use, future land use, is commercial sure. and medium density. And, and so six months from now, if somebody was going to plan on it, they could still plan on it, but they know yep. on no, on September 1st, it's all off. Oh, it's all off. Yep. So they can bring their plan forward then? And we should have, within the six months, I would anticipate we'd have a transportation plan amendment formally approved by council. Um, and at least I would, I would assume and presume that we'd have a fully adopted or approved land use and staging plan in six months. By city council. I'm not saying that's done by met council formally, hard, you know, yeah. stamped, but yep, yep. by city council standards, we should easily have that done in six months. By and I mean land use, staging plan, and transportation. Can it be done in four? Sure. So you're saying I would say for sure, but not include six the months. three applications that we have would not be able to move forward. They would be. Able they to would be. Would be able to. Okay. Sorry, I was hearing the opposite. Yeah, also, yeah, it's, 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 no, they were. They, are they excluded would also be excluded from the moratorium because the act, the applications are already in. Okay. But we would that just takes them out of the noticing that we have to do because yeah, they correct. are not part Got of the it. area correct. that it would apply to. So, so that makes sense with city um, staff. And okay. And that works. I think it makes a lot of sense. And there's nothing south of 81 where we could suddenly... So, no, I think south, if we say south, no, we say 81's our divider, right? Yep. Um, we could, that would be the southwest side where you saw Dominium Apartments. Yeah. That would be, ink, that would you could yeah. develop that today. That's out. That's yeah. That's out of the moratorium. That could be developed today. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. you could see. You could still see development applications coming in from yeah. anything that's southwest of eighty one. Basically, that okay. ninety four area. I'm going to use that as the area ninety four area. I, I okay. I know there was some 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 concern about what we defined as mixed use down there. Um, I don't sure. know that that's going to. We've had zero plan, applications or information, at least no, that I'm aware of. I've had that calls. So. Okay. Yeah, we, we've had zero calls here at okay. City Hall. So. Um, okay. So. We have direction, I think. Good. And, mm -hmm. and, and I'm just going to confirm this. Council is looking for us to bring back an interim ordinance that you could then act on at March 14th, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what the direction How is. long do we want? It sounds like six months six is what months, I want. Yeah. I want two. Two, we can always shut it off. <laughs> yeah, but really? we won't. I mean, I don't think why do we will. Why you say that? We did, why? I just oh. then why not just go with two and renew it every two months? Well, because that's the plan. You 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 okay. go. The idea is to not to try to have to host a public hearing every two months because that's going to take a lot of time. Yeah. Um, six months, I think, is fine. I mean, I, that makes sense. And I, I think I see six months. I don't see any realistic. applications that would come in today that wouldn't come in in the next. You know. Because by the time you get in today, you should have already been in today if you want an application done so you yeah. can build in this summer. I, I just don't want This summer see building is already done based on if you don't have an application in right I, I wouldn't right like now. to see people put money into plans that 
they're done. They get them all drafted. Everything's done, and we save and we up the break wrong land use. Yep. Yep. Um, don't dis I don't disagree. So I think a six month. If our intention sense. is is right now, our plan is six months. I'd like to be very clear what what the plan is. Like I said, there's no developments going to happen this summer, anyways. So if you're as a new developer, you should have already been in by now. If you wanted to build build something this summer, so this summer is uh, if we're worried about having summer construction mm -hmm. it's not going to happen anyways if the application isn't in today like th the ones that we're going to see in march they might have done this year but that would be it we don't have to post that as part of the moratorium right the t length what? of the moratorium is that's not part of the moratorium it's just the area correct um i think we would post that the six month moratorium correct kevin on the notice public hearing notice that we were considering yeah we, yeah, we yeah, noticed absolutely. that was six months. we don't have to include the timing I mean, we can just leave it blank. We don't have to say it's considering a 12 month or a three month or a six month, okay. but it would be on the resolution or the yep. interim ordinance that you would adopt. Yeah. But then we'd have a chance to hear from the planning commission what they thought was the appropriate amount of time as well. Correct. Cool. Yeah, I would not, yeah. or I was not planning on including a time frame well, in case that time wait. frame changed. Why would you not use that same excuse for where? Because we have to post something. I, I realize that, but we could have posted citywide. And you were very adamant. But the public the noticing is different for that because of the active applications that we currently have in. Because we just removed so the have applications from From the statutes, we have to notify. Oh, because of those three commercial Correct. Yeah. Correct. You got it. Exactly. That makes sense. What do you need from us now? That's it. We got direction. We're good to go. We'll post the public hearing, like I said, to get it in time for the March 14th. We'll have a planning commission recommendation or here or there recommendation at the March 2nd planning commission meeting and then go from there. And then you'll hear back from us on March 14th about a public hearing and stuff. Okay. And then we'll, again, we'll take action at the March 14th meeting. So um, that'll be yeah. the plan. Okay, we're done. We, we beat this one fine. to death. That right? one is, yes. Good. And then some. My shrimp Alfredo is waiting for me. <laughs> I thought we'd have been Sorry there 40 minutes ago. Well, <laughs> all right. You know. On to item H. Conversation on the hiring process of. Um, this is yeah, so I was looking for a little bit more feedback um, from email sent out or um, the process to take place. There is different assumptions being made on that process or what that's going to look like. Um, so I am needing feedback on what you would like as a council, as a whole. So I've had the extreme of having absolutely no staff involvement and I've had the extreme of, um, you know, having having staff pick out the top X amount of candidates and then you guys conduct the interview. So, um, I'm happy with whatever you decide as a group. I can help facilitate that. I just need some direction on what you guys want that to look like. All right. Mm -hmm. Who wants to start? Fire away, Dave. <laughs> Hot seat. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't know that we, I mean, I, I got from your email that there was differing opinions. I didn't know that we were in that spot. You know, for me, I think it needs to be collaborative. I think that you know, staff involvement is in, important in any of these kind of leadership hiring positions because these are the people that have to work with that person the most. Um, I also think that the, you know, there should be council involvement. You know, whether that means all of us or or, or volunteers is I think up to this group. But I think there should be council involvement, and I I would suggest to try to avoid some of the frustration we had with the, the last hire that we um, that that occur simultaneously rather than in separate silos I agree yep yep so if there's a committee that wants to be picked it should be the same committee for all interviews correct yes um, so the other concern that we've had from multiple applicants is that they don't want um, they don't want to become subject to public data requests. Uh, so what that looks like is if the council chooses to have a quorum, as soon as they are um, given an interview, that then makes them subject to the open public, public information. Public so we may have 
some applicants that choose to withdraw, it, and it might not uh, be a factor, but um, there was concern expressed by multiple candidates. Um, so it is up to the council on what they want the process to look like. So David, do you think, I guess I don't quite understand, I don't have full clarity on what you're suggesting then. So you're suggesting that the city look at it and give us five applicants they think are the best applicant and then we interview them? Or are you thinking we interview all of them and they look at everyone and then we come to a consensus together? Sure. Like what is, I don't understand, I'm not clear on what you're saying. Yeah, Sorry. I, I didn't actually speak to the application okay. piece and, and so thanks for asking that. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that the, the hiring committee should be a, a combined group of city staff and council. I, I think that um, for clarity, I think that we ought to see all the applications. Um, we meaning that group that could the committee, the, the committee, com the committee. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, you know, I I don't know. I, I understand the concern. You know, I mean, you apply for a job out in the public sector or the private sector. You know, you click a box that says "Don't contact my current employer," and and you don't. And uh, so I understand where people who would be, you know, have those same kind of concerns that I don't want to get in trouble with my current situation if this one doesn't play mm -hmm. out. Um, but this is a public world. I mean, we can do almost nothing in private, and mm -hmm. you know. So I, I guess I'm less sensitive to that one. Yep, that's fine. So, so, so your your suggestion is we put a committee together, and they do it stem to stern. Yes. Quick question: Are there any of us that wouldn't anyone on council that would not want to be on that committee? Well, we'd have to. We'd also have to probably decide if we want this to be three or more, or not. That's why I'm asking because yeah, if three people say I don't want to be on that, then that makes it really easy to make a decision. If they don't, then I want to be. I'll be clear. I want to be part of the process. If we go down that route. Yeah. I, well, who wouldn't? Who wouldn't want to be? That's why I'm asking. On the list, because I would want to be. You would want to be. After. Yeah, <laughs> after what we went, yeah. I don't have a problem not being there. Okay. I got so many things going on. I just okay. Obviously, yeah, I would like to be there. So, what's the, what's so now the, you got a quorum right there. Right? Exactly. Right. That's what I was trying so, to get to. Yep. And that <laughs> doesn't mean it, we can't do it that right. way. Right. No. Right. no. Yep. And and would this be uh, a collection of um, staff, or would it be the staff? Uh, I guess. Be up to you guys to decide, but I'm just curious: is have you talked about this at all? Would it be? Um, no, we are looking for direction. So, if you have struggling. an idea of how mm -hmm. large or small you would want the committee, so, so can I make a suggestion? So, I need to yeah. piggyback on what you're saying. I think one way that we may be able, we may be able to keep a larger applicant pool without having to post everything would be to send out the applications to those that want to be involved in the process. I'm, I would like to know, just from the applications, if the city staff that are going to be doing it, which would not be Zach in this nope. case for yep. obvious reasons, so whether that's Amy, Marty, Gary, and Paul, um, or whomever that's going to be, look through those applications and say, if we were to the interviews, here's the five we'd want to interview. Those of us on city council are doing it. If we're like, yep, we agree with that five, but we want to pull one more, or nope, we just want four, Like, we can reply back then, but I think that way, if we do it that way, we make, because how many applicants were there? You can tell us. Uh, yeah, so today we've just received 14. Yep. So I anticipate that we will yep. receive is, a few more. That's great news, in my opinion, that we got, we got that a selection to choose from, so, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So your, 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 your suggestion is we have staff thin them out a little bit? With us seeing all yeah. of them, so that yep. way if, so if, if we, we disagree with them, we ah, I'll pull this one anyways, but then we only have to yeah. quorum an interview for the ones we want to, and then at that point we reach out to those, let's say it's, I'm yeah, picking around number four or five, five or and then they say, nope, I don't want to do that because I don't want my name out there, then they've just whittled the pool they down even more for us. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. If council wants to be the ones to go through all the applications, that is not public data, and I will remind you when I share the applications not to share any information that I'm giving you. Mm -hmm. um, it only becomes public when you choose to interview that person. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, I'm just saying of those those of us that want to be part of that hiring process and, and do that, then yep. 
I, I'm okay with that. I, I believe that we have people that we should trust here to help guide us and in actually, but not make the end yeah, decision. Yeah, I think I had thought gave me a little bit, and that, that path is kind of what I was thinking also, that staff would whittle that down. I'm okay and, with and that. And we may look at it and say, hey, you know, this one I really don't agree with, or yep. um, I don't know. Does, do you have any yeah, concerns I think, about that? I think that that can work. You know, I mean, I don't think anybody any of us have any interest in interviewing 14 people. No, I hope so not. We, <laughs> um, no. You know, so there would be a, a, a first cut to this for sure. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, do do we do that by seeing the, the applications and, and scoring them? I, I know you had a suggested scoring sheet al already. We we could use something like that to s and then see how it, how it plays out. If we all pick the same five, then great we move ahead and they don't need or to be scored correct you nope. so no so what i've learned is that we don't need to score them and this position doesn't have veterans preferences um i would suggest coming up maybe even it's a simpler scoring sheet than the one that i had shared with you guys um something to put them in rank mm -hmm. so i would hope that you wouldn't just say i want to interview these four people it would be Maybe not points, but this one had more experience or, you know, a reason and an order of who ranked higher on paper versus... You're, you're talking about the staff process of whittling it down? Yeah, I think that's staff... It, well, the committee process, right? Because it would be... I mean, you should have a process as well to whittle it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There should be a consistent between staff and council of... How you're scoring them, or evaluating them, or looking that, at them is that consistent piece, then? Right, and then we'll right. Pull it all together. So, you, you, so Dave, you think you'd be okay with staff thinning it out with some oversight, and then this committee would look at the final X number? I'd be fine with the, you know, staff thinning it out with with a criteria, okay. so that okay. you're you, you're using some defined criteria. So here's how we here's how we scored these, and these are the top five, or top three, or however many we choose that we I want to do. I was thinking three, but whenever yeah. we can, yeah. we can worry about that. Three. Yeah. So, but I still think that that it, it'd be a good idea for us to at least look at that list and see if we roughly agree. Mm -hmm. We as a council, um, or at least individually, when when the list comes out, you guys have any. No, I'm I'm on board with it. I think it's the, ultimately their decision. They're going to be the ones working with them. So I would like to see them, you know, forego most of the process. Yes, with some oversight from us as far as who we decide, and then the forming a committee. You have to form that tonight, right? Yeah, or that'd be nice to have direction. Of saying, yep. hey, we're, yep. our intent is to inform. Yeah, form so a we can start tonight. that process um, okay. of reviewing them. Uh, the the posting closes on. On Saturday. Friday, Saturday, Saturday, 18th. Yeah. Um, so I was planning on waiting until, um, realistically, it will probably be Wednesday um, to send out all applications at once. So it's not, okay, okay I sent these five and now I need to send mm -hmm. the last I prefer minute them all ones. In one like, packet yeah, versus yeah. 15 yeah. separate because I'm, I'm going to forget one. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Do you have any? No. I'm, I'm fine with. I, I agree the council needs to be part of the committee. Mm -hmm. So just to throw it out there, you know, um, in, in terms of what the mix is between staff and, and council, I would suggest equal numbers. Yeah. Equal numbers. Yeah. So we have five council, we got five staff. So if everybody's okay. going to be involved, then five staff. Yeah. Well. Or if you don't have five well, interested. I don't have a problem not being involved. Right. Travis, I'll be involved, yeah. Okay, so it would be, I guess, four. Four, four and four. Okay. That works out fairly decent. Right. Just typically you want an odd one, number. Two, three, That's what I was going to so say. So tie goes to the council. Yeah, you need. Okay. Is that a fair? Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about a tie, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you and I talked about this. It's very rare that, and maybe you experienced something different, but I've never had any say who my boss is going to be. And I had one year where I went through. Well, technically, you guys are my boss, and yeah. I don't have a say who you are. Fair. <laughs> well, <laughs> one vote. people are your I, boss. I don't, I don't <laughs> have a say in who my <laughs> boss is either. Um, we represent them. Yeah, represent yeah, yeah. <laughs> True. Sorry. Hierarchy is, is a boss. Uh, 
Yeah. Well, my my experience has been, I mean, if it's particularly if it's a if a public facing position, which this obviously is, mm -hmm. um, I would have used a, a committee. Um, in the, but the final hiring authority would would be me, and it would be it would be rare to come to a different conclusion than the committee did, but it's happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, and, and since the we here, I guess, is the council, you know, that's the tiebreaker if it's an even number. Except for we have an even number of council, <laughs> but yes, yeah. Well, we all speak with one voice, don't we? Well, uh, she's saying what if all... I mean, no he likes to no be, <laughs> because Scott's not being involved, that leaves us with an even number, so there is no tiebreaker. I suppose it goes to the mayor. Well, in the end, I mean, the five of us have to vote to hire. Correct. Right. I guess, so yeah, there is that. It's five. So, um, yeah, I think... Yeah, the four of us can't agree at the end of the day. We just... I think the odds of, of us four having... Uh, let me not finish that statement, I guess. Okay, uh, so I'm hearing the committee. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm hearing the committee history. is you four, I and tried then to make department that joke. heads, <laughs> more than Chief Enga, I, I, Marty, Gary. and Gary, and myself. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. I think I have the direction that I need. Well, uh, we will have to come up with a set of questions and have further communication as a committee um, on what we want. And the committee, Numbers once the committee that. recommends that person, it isn't all of a sudden going to change. Well, there's only one committee at this time, so. Okay. All right. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it at that. All right. So now we got to take pictures. Move it on. <laughs> okay. Well. Do we want to end the meeting so we can take our mics off and let Chris go? Or yeah. Yeah, we could. Yeah. You I, I don't picture doesn't necessarily right. to be part so of you the got, meeting. So you got all the direction you needed on that one. Her now until I fall off the email. Until you <laughs> say what? <laughs> okay, if there are any other, unless there's any objection, we will be adjourned. We're adjourned. All right. Cool.